Good morning, Madam Chairman and members of the committee. And I'd like to explain the substitute to you and I will be brief, um, but the substitute, it differs from what you saw last week in a few ways. First of all, it defines in-person instruction with a reliable definition, and it defines what is not instruction. For instance, virtual education in a classroom with a proctor would not be in-person education. It requires each school board to offer in-person education um, for the uh, minimal numbers of hours required annually uh, to each person in K-12 schools to follow the mitigation guidelines of the CDC to do that in a safe way. And this is important, Madam Chairman, because uh, the, the um, there's been some dispute as this has come forward that there are some schools that don't want to um, open because they're worried about students passing in the hallways not being six feet apart. But if you really look at the CDC guidelines, they're talking about six feet apart for 15 minutes or more, which would be in a classroom setting. And even that, the American Academy of Pediatrics said, do your best on this, but let nothing be an obstacle to open, opening schools because it is so very important. This addresses early child care as the last substitute did. Moving down to the next paragraph, Madam Chairman, it talks about how you would close a school once open. And this has been an area of concern and confusion. And what this bill does is it um, requires strict adherence to the VDH determination of level of school impact. And that is different than looking at community spread and testing numbers, which are relevant peripheral decision makers, but it has been advised that the best decision for closing schools is what's actually happening in the school. It then gives the schools, uh, it asks the schools to work with the health department in these issues to make sure that they can provide safety and quarantine for those students that are necessary for the shortest period of time for the least interruption of in-person education. Additionally, we have the ability for um, parents, guardians, or legal custodians to opt out of in-person so that they can continue at virtual. In response to concerns from superintendents, we've asked the Department of Education to develop guidelines for success in virtual uh, so that we know that kids that are struggling can get additional supports as they would in school. Um, and then additionally, um, we are protecting the teachers so that we are sure that if they need to isolate or quarantine, that they can still participate in education for the duration of that. We want to make sure they have the opportunity to get their um, vaccinations, that they have the ability to um, teach totally virtually based on the American Disabilities Act. And that, Madam Chairman, is basically a summary of the bill. I want to point out a couple of things. One is this is just such an imperative for Virginia. Uh, the um, CDC has, has said that open schools are infrastructure. And that's really relevant as we look at some of the data coming forth now, data that they're tagging this she session. We are seeing that mothers, working mothers have the highest unemployment rates. And after all of our efforts for equality and employment, we have had a huge setback with untold jeopardy for moms going forward because the infrastructure school is a necessary component of the stability of the family. We know that schools are safe. We have evidence to show that teachers that are teaching in schools have no increased risk of COVID as compared to their uh, community counterparts. So this is a safe way for us to do the most important thing. Undoubtedly, the number one healthcare crisis we have now in Virginia is the what our children are suffering, increased suicide rates, depression, increased suicide ideation, learning loss, jeopardy and safety. And we need our most valuable schools all open again because they are such a great value and do so much more than give curriculum to children. And I want to say, Madam Chairman, uh, you know, a great thanks to Delegate Van Valkenburg. I want to point out that this is a teacher and a doctor from two different parties who are working together to get this right for Virginia because we both understand how important it is. And I'm really grateful that we're doing this in a collaborative way. And we're doing something like this bill that is so strong 
that it asserts what all of the science tells us is what we need to do Thank for you, Virginia. Madam Chairman and members of the committee. I will say this in, in a, a moment of my deepest sincerity in a legislative situation, this is an imperative for our children. The science and the data are absolutely unequivocal. There is no issue with power of the school boards or how things are done. We disassembled our schools last March. It requires centralized leadership from the state to advise them to open. Some of those opposed to this bill were absolutely right. This means that you follow CDC within the context of schools being open. We must do it for our children. We must do it for our families. And I will give you a quote. One of the advocates that was not able to speak today um, sent me this and they said, our children are getting boxed into cyclical poverty, illiteracy and incarceration. Ultimately, a life of lost opportunities and denial to the pursuit of happiness as afforded in the US Constitution. And th that says it all. This is, their, the risk of opening school is vastly less significant, if at all, in comparison to the damage and risk that our kids are now enduring. We must open schools. This bill accomplishes that with all of the thoughtful accommodation as expressed by Delegate Van Valkenburg. I ask you to support this bill. I'm really proud that Virginia is gonna do this. Thank you so much for your help and support.